Welcome to The Drum Shuffle, a podcast offering insights, perspectives, and conversations for drummers. I'm your host, Jamie Eads. Hey, how's it going out there, everybody? Welcome to the Drum Shuffle Podcast. Jamie Eads joining you as I do each and every week. This is episode 133. Uh, I hope you guys are having a fantastic summer. Uh, As you know, we are in the midst of our summer break here at the Drum Shuffle Podcast, but I managed to catch a really cool interview uh, late last week. And I wanted to bring that to you because it is a little bit time sensitive, and I think you're really, really going to like this. So uh, as a special little midsummer treat while we're on our hiatus, I'm going to bring you an interview with the great Todd Sukerman of Sticks right after this message from our sponsor, Lost Cabos Drumsticks. The best kept secret for drummers is finally out. Los Cabos drumsticks may look like the sticks you grew up with, but these are not your father's drumsticks. Los Cabos drumsticks is Canada's number one drumstick brand, and they are coming to a retailer near you. With operations in over 28 countries worldwide, thousands of drummers have already discovered the Los Cabos difference. Using FSC certified wood from Canada and the U.S., Los Cabos make the finest quality drumsticks, percussion tools, and accessories on the market. The best news, Los Cabos Drumsticks offers you a ton of choice. They have 22 individual drumstick models and 14 percussion tools, many of which are available in three different wood types, maple, white hickory, and red hickory. Red hickory comes from the center, or heart, of the hickory tree and has been independently proven to be both stronger and more elastic than white hickory without adding a lot of weight. While most drumstick manufacturers have shunned red hickory, Los Cabos Drumsticks has embraced it, becoming the only established stick brand in the world to offer a full line of red hickory drumsticks. To learn more about Los Cabos Drumsticks, visit them online at loscabosdrumsticks.com, follow them on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and don't forget to ask for Los Cabos Drumsticks at your favorite retailer. Dare to be different. Join the Red Hickory Revolution with Los Cabos Drumsticks. All right, guys and girls, as I mentioned, we're going to be joined today by the great Todd Sukerman of Sticks, um, one of the most often asked questions that I get. I get emails about this all the time. Why don't you have Todd Sukerman on the drum shuffle? Um, and I will just say this. Um, we, Todd and I have gone back and forth via email since I started this show almost four years ago. Um, and Todd is a very, very busy guy. He stays very busy. And it just so happened that we managed to get our schedule synced up and he is in the process of doing uh, a lot of interviews on the new Sticks record, uh, which is incredible, called Crash of the Crown. And I managed to get Todd worked in for about 40, 45 minutes here. And we, we talked a, a lot about, you know, the pandemic and what kept him busy during that time. Um, you know, we talked a lot about the new record. Todd put out a solo record last year uh, called Last Flight Home, which is incredible as well. But you just can't ask for a a nicer guy in the music business. And unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Todd is one of the world's greatest drummers. I mean, this guy is just amazing. So here's what I'm going to say to everybody. Styx is on the road for the next several months. Go see them. Uh, It is a master class in rock and roll drumming from Todd every single night. Uh, If you see Todd's name for a clinic, go see him in clinic. This is a guy that is playing at such a high level. Um, We all have a lot to learn from him. 
And, uh, you know, we were just so pleased to get him on. We wanted to bring this to you in the middle of the summer. So without further ado, please help me welcome to the Drum Shuffle podcast, Todd Zuckerman. Hey, good afternoon, Todd. How's it going, man? It's going great, Jamie. Thanks for having me today. Oh, no. Thanks so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule uh, to come on the Drum Shuffle. How is beautiful Kettering, Ohio today? Uh, well, I, I have I have not been out of my hotel room yet today, <laughs> but it looks like uh, the sun is shining out my hotel window. Um, well, sort of partly cloudy. Um, hopefully it will remain sunny. But uh, so far, so good. Cool, man. Well, uh, hey, you know, I know you guys are back out, um, you know, after the world kind of shut down for a little bit. How are the shows uh, going so far? Are people just crazy because they've been locked up for a year or is it just kind of back to normal? Um, you know, it, for, for us, from our perspective, I mean, it's, it's great to be playing music and, you know, seeing each other, seeing everyone in the crew and our organization. Um, and it's been great playing for audiences. Um, you know, I, I have to, I have to think that maybe everyone seems just a touch reserved than normal because uh, a lot of people, it's sort of their first time venturing out into a crowd. Yeah. Um, so while, while it's uh, certainly, um, and thankfully, pando- uh, 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 pandemic, <laughs> what's the word? <laughs> um, uh, uh, well, it's, it's bedlam by, by the end of the show, I'll, I'll say that. Um, but it, it takes, it's, I think it takes a little longer for people to warm up because I, I, I sense that they're, they're a little, you know, mildly freaked that they're out in front, you know, um, amongst thousands of people. Um, but it is, it's a joyous celebration um, nonetheless, and it's been really, really great to be back doing what, what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, no doubt. Well, and, you know, I mean, you have a, a pretty great, um, you know, social media presence. And I know that and we'll get into this a little bit as we continue talking. But, um, you know, you were pretty prolific in in staying active during, you know, all of the, the pandemic shutdown. You know, you you obviously you guys have released a record that that was done and um, you know, you released that in June and if I'm reading correctly, you actually did your drum parts from, from your home studio, um, and lots of video output from you. So you stayed busy, but how different was it for you during all that time of, of kind of no touring? Well, you know, for me, um, it, you know, it, it, it feels weird, uh, selfish or self-centered to, to, to say this, but for me, I, I had a great time. I've had 25 street years on the road. It was nice to spend some time at home and immediately, you know, in, in a world that was panicky, um, you know, full of sick people and dying people, uh, I stayed in with my family and I'm, I'm fortunate that I was able to do that. Um, and I, I worked on my, my drumming and, and, and my own playing and had many projects and was hired to do many records. So it, it was a very fertile time artistically for me. Um, that was a silver lining. I, I looked for all the gifts and all the silver linings in the situation I possibly could. Another was to, you know, see, you know, 15 months of my daughter grow from, you know, age six to seven. Um, which is a gift that never would have been afforded me had life continued normally um, at at any point. So um, I was trying to dwell on all the positives personally for me (laughs) at the time. Um, And I mean, I feel I'm a better musician now than I was in in March of, of 2020 because I had that sort of time. You know, you you can't practice on the road. You can't practice on a hotel bed. I mean, you can, you know, do maintenance practice. You can keep things going. You can play on a pad. You could play on a hotel bed, but it's nothing like, you know, having hours to work on your touch and your feel and the sound on the instrument. It's, that's, that's something that can only be accomplished in the practice room with you on the drums. So I, I, I you know, hadn't had time like that in my adult years ever. Yeah. So I, I wanted to take advantage of, of, of that and hopefully we'll never have that kind of time again. 
Um, <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to read a bunch of books and do some things that, that, that I hadn't, uh, or that it's very hard for me to find the time to do in, in regular, normal traveling life. Um, so, uh, it, you know, again, it, it was a, a very fertile time for me when I did a new Finally George record, a Legacy Pilots record, a Neil Zaza record. All these things have, have yet to come out. Um, you know, random sessions and random songs, you know, for, for, for people here and there. Um, I have a weekly show on, on Drumeo, which is, you know, at the, the subscription uh, drum education network. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I was far from twiddling my thumbs and putting up my feet wondering what I'm going to do. Uh, every, every day had uh, activities uh, planned, you know, that also included, you know, tucking my daughter into bed every night, which was a lovely thing to do. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, and, and let me just say on behalf of every other drummer in the world, all we needed was you practicing more and getting better. That's that's exactly what we needed. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well ho- hopefully all you guys were doing the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, what I think is so cool, um, you know, and, and I know that you you probably hear this a lot, and, and I certainly don't want to make you uncomfortable in any way, but how does it feel to be one of the great drummers in the world? I mean, you, uh, undoubtedly, you are one of the most accomplished drummers in modern times. Um, do, do you feel like you've taken on a more... Uh, a, a bigger role as an ambassador for drumming at large, or, or did it just kind of happen? Um, well, first off, thank you for saying that. That's very lovely um, to hear. But I, I, you know, I don't feel, I, I don't perceive myself as that. And, and it, that's really not, I mean, it's, if, if others do, that's, that's very lovely. But uh, I, I'm just like any other drummer where you're looking down a highway and you're not happy where you are and you want to keep improving and, and getting better and you want to get down a highway and, and get to the point where, you know, I, I still listen to things I do and I want to jump off the highest bridge. <laughs> um, so I, I'm no different than anyone else in, in that respect. So I, 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 I don't... Um, I don't consider myself anything other than uh, a guy who plays drums that that wants to wake up and, and be better today than than I was yesterday, and it's it's just really as, as simple as that. And any other um, accolades or things or uh, <laughs> anything I I might be called good or bad, um, you know what what someone else thinks of me is really none of my business. Uh, but I I just try to get up and. And I want to play music, and I want, I want to play the drums, and I, I want to be better today than I was yesterday. It's it really as simple as that. Yeah, well, I, and I mean, I think that's such a, a, you know, a noble way to look at it. And, it, you know, I think we all just want to get better at our chosen instrument, right? I mean... Well, well I mean, l- look, I, you know... I, I say that I say this with all all sincerity, um, and there's no like false modesty here. You know, it's it's lovely that I have won a bunch of like Modern Drummer Readers Poll awards, and they're up in my office. You know, I, I'm I'm very grateful and thankful that they're there. But I put them up, and I sort of chuckle, and I I pay them no mind because if I start believing that, then I'm done. Yeah. You know what 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 what's their what's what's their if that's what I think of me, then I'm done working. I can sit back and get fat and, you know, do nothing, put my feet up, do nothing and, and, and phone it in. Yeah. And that's not, that's not how I work. That's not how my brain works. So while it's very, very lovely and deeply appreciative, uh, it's still, I, 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 I don't believe those things. And I, I take it with a grain of salt because I, I know, what I can do and I know what I can't do and the things that I, I can't do. Um, uh, those are the things that, 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 that keep me working because when I, if, if I, I get to the point where I actually play something that is exactly how I wanted it to be, that's one of the greatest feelings in the world. And it doesn't always happen that, that, that's, that's, it's not a, uh, you know, a hundred percent hitting free throws, nothing, but not all the time that that's not my experience or that's not how I, I perceive the pursuit of um, improving, 
on this instrument. So that that's one of the things that keeps me going. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I think however we find our motivation as musicians, um, you, you know, to keep pushing that envelope, it's it's as important as great performance, right? I mean, it's it, how do we continue developing those skills? And, you know, to that end, you mentioned 25 years straight of touring. You joined Sticks in 1996, I think, if my memory serves. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and, and Sticks has continued pushing that envelope as a band. And the new record is no exception. Um, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about the new record. You know, it's called Crashing of the Crown. Um, it, it's um, it sounds like a Styx record, but it has a little bit different element uh, thematically. Uh, it, it, I think I'm I'm fair in saying that it's a little bit um, darker subject matter than previous Styx records. But man, what a phenomenal record! Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, you know, the, the the record was written and ready to be recorded before the pandemic hit. Um, and, you know, sort of for me, one of the astounding things is how many of the songs, if you would listen to the, the lyrical content, it sounds like it was written during and or about the pandemic. Um, but that was really coincidence uh, that it, it, it came out that way. I mean, a, a, a song like Sound the Alarm, I mean, I remember when the pandemic hit, um, well, it, you know, when the world stopped in, in March of 2020, I was scheduled to go to Nashville and record the drums in April. Well, obviously that was put on hold, but I kept all the songs in my practice repertoire, you know, kind of keeping everything fresh and, 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 and very focused and clear in, in my mind. And I remember working on the uh, sound the alarm one day and I almost burst into tears because the, the lyrical content was about what we were going through. It, it, it just it hit me like a ton of bricks. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, eventually the, the record had to be recorded and it sort of has to start with me because everything is built upon the drum performance. So, um, you know, management sort of they were trying to get me to go to Nashville in May. And I said, look, I'm not, I'm not doing that. You know, I've got a young daughter. I'm the youngest guy in the band. Something happens to me. You know, are you going to put my daughter through college? You know, <laughs> silence. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, <laughs> you know, but I, I have an alternative. I have an alternative. Um, you know, there's a, a, a program called uh, Audio Movers Listen To, where my engineer could run my studio from the safety of his house. I'm alone in my studio safely. And, you know, others could listen in high resolution audio via a, a private invite link. And then we got on a Zoom call. And uh, so I recorded 17 songs in, in three days. I was, you know, I was ready to go. I was, you know, highly prepared. And everything worked flawlessly. Audio movers listened to worked flawlessly. The Zoom call, you know, hey, you know, maybe something different going in in the second chorus. All right, punch me in. Bam. Uh, it was, it, the whole thing was uh, easy breezy and, and super smooth and, and came off without a technical hitch at all. So it was really a, a great way to do it. And, and audio movers is really the thing that sort of put me back in business, you know, to, to, to be a session musician um, for the last you know year or so um so now that was really uh, you know one of the greatest things for me um and that uh, that that kept me going yeah. during that time and then then everyone else could could build uh their tracks uh, upon the, the completed drum tracks and uh then bam here we got uh, we got crash of the crown um all this time uh, later and you know the amazing thing is that it debuted uh, on at number one on, on Billboard's Rock Records, which is you know something that I, I've never experienced before, and it was uh, really wonderful and gratifying to to, to read the reviews and, and and have the success of number one on Amazon bestseller for you know the first five or six days that, that it was out. Um, you know that that's something that we never even considered as a possibility. So um, all things considered, it was an amazing experience. And, and continues to be. 
Well, I mean, it's just a fantastic record, and I highly recommend it if you haven't picked up a copy yet. You know, we're we're doing this interview, you know, late July. Uh, the the record's been out of just over a month. Go go pick up a copy because it really is. I mean, it's it's astoundingly good. Um, Thank and you. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and um, y- you know, to hear you say, "Hey, this was written before the pandemic." Some of the songs make a little more sense to me. I'm not a political show, so I won't get into <laughs> into any of that. But you know, I, I I think I know exactly you know where some of the that subject matter came from now. Um, <laughs> thinking back, but uh, it's just a great record. Are are you guys doing some of uh, the material off the record live in your shows? Obviously, and and how is it how is it being received? It, it's being received really great uh, because I think a lot of people have picked up the record, and it, it's great to see people singing along with it. Um, we're doing let's see one, two, th- we're doing three three full songs right now in the set. Lawrence touches on uh, "Lost at Sea" before "Come Sail Away," and we've been doing sort of like a one verse, one chorus uh, uh, acoustic front porch version of "Sound the Alarm," but we're, we're going to be adding that in full, full band, full production. Um, I think actually we're, we're supposed to be working on that today uh, at, at Soundcheck. So, um, you know, one, one, one of the, the nice things about the music on this record is all the songs, they kind of get in and get out pretty quickly. They're, they're pretty short, so we're not making someone sit through like a seven-minute piece of music they don't know. Um, it, it's all... It's all it's all sort of, <laughs> it's all action. Sure. Um, so, and, and also we, we learned with the mission, if you open up the show with a, with a song from the new record that that's worthy of opening up the show, you sort of get one for free. No, no one's going to go get a beer, or go to the bathroom <laughs> for the first song of the night. So right. that's, that, that's, that, that's a good trip uh, or good to, a tip for, um, and any musicians out there that have a new record, you get one for free if you open up <laughs> the show with one of them. Oh, that's so funny. We we often used to say, you know, when we would put out a new record, it would be like, okay, we need to sell some T-shirts. Here's one from the new record, you know, because everybody goes to the merch stand or they go to the bathroom or whatever. It's just so it's so hard to keep someone's attention with something new. There, there, you know, I think most crowds are play the hits. Right. I mean, and I, I, I think that's just the average music listener. I think people that are diehard fans are like, no, I want to hear the new record. How, how do you guys interpret that live? So I, I just think it's a different perspective from different audience members. Does that make sense? Well, you know, it, and, 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 it, and it, it differs from from show to show. Like if you have, you know, an, an evening with where we're doing a two hour show in a theater, that's going to be a, a different feel than playing, um, you know, some outdoor festival where people have maybe been there for six or seven hours. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they may be a little, you know, lubricated, and, you know, and it's getting late. It, you know, it, you, 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 like anything, you, you got to read the room. Um, but, it, you know, again, it's, it, it hasn't been the obvious bathroom breaks or the uncomfortable milling about or the golf clap afterwards. So they, they, all, all the new stuff has gone over, um, you know, really, really well, uh, thankfully. So um, that, that's that been a whole another positive aspect of, of this whole thing. So um, we'll see. I mean, ho- hopefully those those good vibes and good feelings uh, regarding the, the new stuff um will continue. But, you know, again, you can't inundate an audience that, you know, by and large, a majority of them are there to see the hits and you could release Sergeant Pepper and some people, they're not going to care. <laughs> they just, they, you know, they're, they're, it, it, does, it doesn't matter. And, you know, I mean, I, I used to say, you know, you know, ask McCartney and the Rolling Stones how their new stuff is going over live. You know, it's, if, if it's, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And, and, you know, I mean, I just, I, I just think that's where we're at. Uh, you know, as an industry right now, it's just hard to get attention and keep attention with with new material. Um, it, it's, you know, the business is way different. Yeah, but 
it's been good so far. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that as my answer. Well, and I hope that, <laughs> I hope that absolutely continues for you guys. Now I, I'm going to, I'm going to take a little bit of a left turn here, but I, I've always wanted to know the answer to this question. Um, you put up a lot of YouTube videos from, um, you know, stick shows. And uh, it, it's usually like a, a GoPro camera, you know, from your point of view or, or, you know, it's kind of focused on you. And what I'm always blown away by, not only your amazing playing on those great classic songs by Styx, is the mix that are on your videos and I, I've got to know, is that your in-ear mix that we're hearing when we watch those great clips? Uh, no, it, it, it's not. And I, I, well, I, I want to preface this with, I mean, the, the reason why I, I got the camera was because, you know, technology now allows, you know, I, I can get a good recording in a, in a visual capture of what I'm doing. So I got that to improve my performance. So I would watch, you know, the, the previous night's show, make mental notes, and then try to play better that night, then record that show, try to play better. And, and, and that, that is a, a laborious way, but the best way to improve, to be in touch with what you're actually doing, what you actually sound like in the, in the, in the clarity of daylight. Um, and it always has to be the show before. I, I have no interest in watching five shows ago. I, I can't improve upon that now. That's, right. that's come and gone. It has to be the last night. I remember how I felt, how I uh, was feeling, what I was thinking, and I can tap into that. And then, sorry, there's some sort of construction going on here, if you can hear that out my window. Um, so th that's why I, 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 I started filming the shows. And then if I could find you know, 58 seconds that didn't make me want to jump off of a bridge, I would post that. And then people seem to really enjoy that. So what the mix is, um, it, it's a dedicated separate line mix into my camera. And I have the music back a little bit because I don't know what any of my bandmates might be feeling that night. I got you. If I, if I posted, you know, a full performance of, um, let's say blue collar man. And then the next day, Tommy was like, man, I was really struggling last night. I wish you wouldn't have posted that. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't realize he was struggling. You sounded fine to me, but in his mind, he was having a rough time. And now he's pissed that I post that has never happened. But the, the reason why this never happened is because I was sensitive enough to my bandmates as a human being to, to have the drums be 50% of the mix that if you know the songs, you know, you, you can hear enough that you, you know, it's happening, but it's, it's I'm, I'm not interested in giving a, a full, you know, warts and all record mix for the world to hear or to make comments on. I got gotcha. um, So that, so my inner mix is vastly different from what I'm allowing anyone else to hear. And, and, and I, I'm doing that out of consideration for my bandmates that w whatever they may be, be feeling, um, you know, that I don't ruffle anyone's feathers. So it's, it's, it's really um, simple, common courtesy, really. Well, you know, and I, I wanted to know the answer to that because, you know, it, it always sounds amazing. The mix is always amazing, you know. So I, I, that's because it, that's because it's fifty percent drums. To us drummers, we're like, yeah, that's how music is supposed to sound. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's uh, we we actually, you know, when we first went to in ear monitors in my own group, you know, uh, we we called it the more me effect, right? Because mm -hmm. it, when you when you switch to IEMs, you can get all of you that you want, right? And it doesn't bother anybody else. So it's always more me. <laughs> So, uh, I just find that an interesting thing playing in a band, but, um, well, I mean, I, mean, I, I think that, you know, though I have a, a, a more well-rounded mix that I hear, uh, the, the drums are sort of the loudest things. And well, for me, why would that be? Well, if I was playing in a room with a bunch of guys 
the drums would sort of be the loudest thing because they're directly in front of me. I got a snare drum right in front of my face like that. It's going to be one of the loudest things. That's how I'm used to hearing music right. um, as I'm, I'm playing it with other human beings. So um, that, it, it just seems to work for me. Yeah, well, I mean, I, and I think that's just the the natural uh, the the natural way we want to hear it as drummers. You know, I mean, it's always, you know, my kick drum is always twenty percent louder than anything else in my in ear mix because that's what I want to hear, right? Uh, it, you know, and it I, I don't know it's it's the the feeling it invokes in me that inspires my playing. So I mean, I think that's. Well, yeah, it- you it's know. what you want to hear, and it's also what you want to feel, because, well, right. you know, the, the bass drum very often is playing on the one. So you want to make sure that that one is solid and placed exactly where you where you feel it. And nothing is worse than not hearing your bass drum. It feels like someone, you know, shot Novocaine into your legs. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's a very unnerving feeling to, to, to be, you know, playing in a club where there's like, whatever, a situation you find yourself in where you can't hear the bass drum or there's no monitor or whatever. Um, and, and then all the, you know, the guitarists and bass player, they turn up to 11 and you, you may as well just be, uh, uh, you know, kicking a bass drum head with your foot. It, it, it makes that much sound um, or that little sound actually. So yeah, that's, that's why we want to have the, the bass drum strong, loud and round and, and be feeling it. Um, because that's that's just going to make the music feel and sound better to to us. Absolutely, absolutely. So, well, listen. I want to be respectful of your time. I know you've got a busy day ahead of you. You've got a gig tonight. You got sound check. You got new material to work on. But I would be remiss if we didn't talk about your solo release from last year, um, which dare I say is, you know, when I first caught wind of it, it was not what I expected. And, you know, uh, it's, uh, um, I'm tripping on my words a little bit here, but, uh, it's called last flight home and it's you handling the drumming duties, but also lead vocals as well. And Todd, I had no idea you could sing, you know, I mean, you're, you're a great singer. Um, but it's not, it's not a sticks record. Is that, is that a fair statement? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, in having done a lot of interviews when the record came out, you know, you, you have to find some way to, uh, compartmentalize, categorize the music. And, and, and for me, it's like sophisticated pop. If you like bands like jellyfish, XTC, crowded house, elbow, um, you know, if you like bands like that, you, you, you stand a chance of liking this. And, and that's really, a, that type of music is really something that I'm, I'm drawn to very a, a English side of, uh, of sophisticated pop, you know, chord changes, lyrics, melodies is the most important thing to me. And, and I thought that doing something like this was a much harder task to, to do it well was a much harder task than like putting some sort of drum centric fusion record where I'm soloing over ostinatos and kicks and, and, and whatnot, you know, maybe I'll do that at, at some point, but, um, you know, one of the hardest things about music is actually writing a good song with a good melody and good chord changes and, uh, and a, a, a lyrical content that is an act- actual story. Um, and I didn't know that I could do it either, but my, my old pal, J.K. Harrison, who cajoled me and pestered me for years about doing a record, um, <laughs> and I, I always blew him off, uh, he totally believed in me when I didn't believe in me at all. So it, it, this record never would have come about w- without him continually annoying me into doing it. <laughs> Well, um, I, I'm glad but, he did because I mean it really no, is. A, thank you. It really is a good record, and you know, I, w- again, when I first you know started seeing some things, you know, some videos and 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 listening to the songs, I was like, I'll be damned, Todd Zuckerman can sing. You know, I mean, that's thank you. Yeah, man, it's it's fantastic, and I, you know, I just think so many drummers miss the opportunity to do something that's outside of what they're known for, right? I mean. 
Um, and I could give a million examples, but you know, I just think when I first heard you were doing a solo record, I was like, it's going to be drum centric, right? I mean, that's just kind of what I thought. And I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't that. And it was like, wow, man, you know, this is showing a whole other dimension to Todd's playing and his musical abilities. And I just think more drummers should do that. Take a chance, uh, you know. Well, th- thanks, man. Well, you, you know, I, I, I sort of have to back all the way up to um, if Phil Collins has been, you know, such a huge inspiration um, to me on so many levels, uh, you know, beyond drumming, the songwriting, singing, uh, uh, producing all the different eras of, I mean, he, he's, he's just absolutely incredible and when he started singing with, with genesis it's, it's one of the most unbelievable stories in rock that I, I don't think enough has been written about it or thought about it i mean here you had a band that was a heavy prog band with peter gabriel as who you know no slouch clearly he's peter gabriel for goodness <laughs> sakes um but he was like this giant personality in all the costumes and, and whatnot. And when Gabriel left uh, the, the band in, a, I don't know, it was May of 75, the fans and the critics and the whole world left the band for dead. They, they thought, he's the guy, he's the guy, he's the guy, you know, main songwriter, blah, 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 blah. And the fact that their next record, finally Phil said, well, you know, I'm trying to teach all these guys the songs that are auditioning, let me just have a go at it. And the next record they did was a trick of the tail, which is a prog masterpiece every second beginning to end. And it was also their most successful record commercially when that record came out. So basically that would be like Bono leaving you two and having Larry Mullen Jr. go, um, how about I give the singing job a go? And the next U2 record is the biggest U2 record of all time with Larry Mullen Jr. singing. That's how improbable the Genesis situation was, yeah. if you, you, you kind of make that analogy. So, uh, you know, anyway, he's, he's always been one of my favorites in, in all eras of Genesis, or it's just been holy music to me. So I found inspiration in that, in the Phil Collins story. And um, in the middle of working on the record, uh, I, I met Phil Collins for the first time. Uh, Nick, his son, who's been playing drums with him, uh, a friend of mine in, in, in Austria alerted me that, uh, that Nick uh, named me as one of his favorite drummers uh, in a German drum magazine. Uh, so I just reached out to Nick through Facebook and, you know, we started writing back and forth and then, you know, he, he hooked, uh, he hooked me up for a show. My, uh, my brother and I met up in a, flew into a city. We went to see the show and met Nick and then, you know, we got his dad. He came out and, you know, it was like an hour before the show and Phil stood with us for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes in the hallway. Um, <laughs> you know, within an hour of showtime. I mean, I don't, I don't see my mom an hour from showtime. And I thought that was so cool <laughs> that he just come, he, he came and, and, and hung out and, and to meet Phil in the, the middle of working on this record, which I wasn't ever sure that I was going to bring it, it, into the end zone until we mastered it. Um, the whole, the whole experience was really really uh magical and um I'm, I'm, I, I can't say I'm, I'm i'm quick to do it again anytime soon but uh it was really really wonderful and, and the response i got from the music and how surprised people were um and it was a scary thing to to make make myself that vulner- vulnerable if someone doesn't like my drumming that's fine but when it's your voice yeah there's, there's nothing you can do about that that's your voice that's your you know um like now it's personal. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right um, on, right on. So it, the, the fact that I was so frightened at this whole prospect, that that's what, what showed me like, this is exactly what I need to do. This is where I need to be. I need to see if I could, if I could actually do this and stand behind every second on, on the record and, and be a hundred percent 
proud of it and, and stand behind it. So that was that was the goal. And um, if, again, it's art. If people liked it, great. There, you know, no music is for everyone. But um, I don't think anyone could say it's bad. And that's really, really what I wanted. To, <laughs> I wanted it all to be good. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think <laughs> I think that's probably the most rewarding thing that I've ever heard about anything I've ever done is, is somebody go, "Well, it doesn't suck," you know. And I'm like, yep. "That well, everything beyond that is a is a total victory." Then, right? Yeah, so I'll, t- I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Right. Well, Todd, um, thanks so much for your time, man. We appreciate you coming on. I know you got a lot to do, but one of the biggest traditions on the Drum Shuffle podcast, we always ask our guests for a good piece of advice. And I know that you're full of good advice. And if if people aren't following you on social media and, and checking out the Drumeo stuff, they need to be doing that. But if you could kind of, you know, summarize down, offer us a good piece of advice as musicians that we can take out there in our day-to-day lives. Oh boy. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm having a, a 50 car pile up in my mind of things. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, I just, I just posted one the other day where we were doing some surgery on, on, on the, the drum rack and, and the drum kit and something that my, uh, my drum tech always does whenever he's setting up the kit, you know, whether you have one bass drum or two, as you're working on the things above the, the bass drum and you're dealing with tools or drum keys, he always puts a towel over the drum key because you're going to drop your drum keys. You're t- tuning your drums uh, or you're, you're, you're doing something with a wrench or uh, an uh, Allen wrench, a, a key set. You always have a towel on the bass drums because you're going to drop stuff on your bass drum and it could gouge the finish. Um, that's one thing. Um, thinking of like little, little tips, tips and, and, and tricks. Um, you know, if you want to do this for your livelihood, you have to really want to do it and you have to give it a hundred percent. And, and the goal is not to try to become rich and famous. The goal is, is to try to, to be a good musician and, and make good music. So I, I, I think if, if your heart and mind is in the right place, that that's going to, um, the universe is going to open up some things for you and, and make your path a little easier than being motivated by things, uh, wh- whether it's m- money or revenge or, you know, <laughs> things that have nothing to do with, uh, with music. So I think if, 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 you, if you have your, your, your mind and your heart in the, in the right place, um, you won't be swimming upstream as much. You, you'll, you'll catch some breaks and you'll, you'll catch a little bit of the flow of the river. Uh, putting you where you want to be. Man, that's that's a good one. And, you know, I, 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 I'm I curious about this as well. Um, that, that's great advice. You're 25 years in to arguably one of the biggest rock bands of all time. Do you ever still just kind of pinch yourself in the middle of a show and go, man, I'm, I'm, I'm on stage with Tommy Shaw and, and JY and I'm playing these timeless classic songs how did I get here? Do you ever have that moment uh, uh, anymore? Um, I, I, I don't, and 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 I I, I don't say that to um, uh, take any of the romance out, out of that that notion. But I, I'm I'm doing a job, and I have to have my mind set on what's happening at all times i'm driving uh i'm driving a a bus down the road and i i can't i can't daydream about that sort of stuff because there's there's a task to be done there's a bus to be driven and and it requires my full attention And, and if i have you know and i've known these guys for so long i mean we've been through so much that they're their family. It's not like, you know, gee, I just, you know, I I played, you know, Hey, Van Morrison was at the gig and he came and sat in and played with Van Morrison. You know what I mean? Some, some of, some of that uh, (laughs) romanticism is gone because I'm, you know, it's like you're, you're running, you're running a marathon, right? And you're sweating and you're breathing hard and you have a long ways to go. You're not thinking, but gee, I always wanted to run the Boston Marathon. You're, you're hauling ass, and you're, you're doing what you have to do. So <laughs> right on. That, that's where my mental attention is. You know, there's, there's always plenty of time to, you know, you know, ponder how amazing the universe is. In the times where I'm sitting in an airport waiting for 
a flight or, um, you know, in any of the, the, the dull sedentary moments and sedentary doesn't always mean dull, but you, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, th- there's times to have, um, flashes of, of, of gratitude, um, and to be thankful for things when it's appropriate to, to, to feel that way. But when, when I'm on stage, we're, we're a band of brothers and it's, there's, there's a task to be done. And that that's what's happening at that moment. Yeah. I hear you. Well, I mean, your playing is just such at just such an incredible level. Um, you know, I, I think I speak for, our whole community, we all strive to get uh, to get to the point where you are. Uh, you make it look effortless. I know it's not, but you do make it look effortless. Um, your playing is is just wonderful, and you know to top it all off, you're you're a, a, a real swell guy too. You know, um, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for all that, man. I, it's, it's deeply, it's deeply appreciated. Thank you for that, Jamie. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're a swell guy. So you're a swell fella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, everybody that I've ever talked to, and you know, this is the first time we've been able to get you, get our schedules synced up. You know, we've tried to, to schedule this show with you uh, several times and you're just so busy and I get that. And, and there's no resentment there at all, but everybody always says, Todd is such a great guy. He'll do your show. I know he will. You just got to get the the schedule synced up. And I'm glad we finally made that work out. And you're welcome here anytime. We've got to do it again when uh, maybe when you're not on the road and we can, you know, spend a full hour talking about life and the universe and, and everything, right? Sure, man. Yeah, just just reach out. We'll we'll definitely do it again, man. It'd be my pleasure. Fantastic. Well, listen, have a great show tonight. Um, uh, for those of you local to me here in Central Kentucky, uh, Sticks will be playing over at the new venue in Sharpsburg, uh, over in Bath County, uh, called the Barnyard Entertainment Complex. You guys are there, uh, I think, on the thirtieth, which is a week from today. So. Uh, for anybody local uh, here to the Drum Shuffle World Headquarters, go see Sticks next week. Todd, thanks so much, man. And uh, we'll we'll be pleased to have you back anytime your schedule allows. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for having me. And uh, stay safe, man. Absolutely. You too. Thanks, brother. All right. Cheers. S- see ya. All right, guys and girls, that is going to wrap up episode 133 of the Drum Shuffle podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, it, it's a little bit off of, uh, the beaten path for us. Cause generally when we're, you know, in our summer hiatus, we don't bring you anything, but, um, that one was uh, sort of time sensitive. I wanted to get it out. So everybody was aware that sticks is out on the road, uh, talk about their new record so that you can go pick up a copy of that. And again, you know, if you're, if you're anywhere near me here in central Kentucky, Sticks is going to be at that new, uh, venue over in Bath County called, uh, the Barnyard Entertainment Complex, uh, this Friday night. So you can still get tickets. It's a very large, brand new venue. I'm sure they would appreciate it if you got over there. So if you're within, you know, a few hours drive of central Kentucky, uh, from what I understand, it's a beautiful venue. Go check out Sticks on Friday night. Um, I have, done some other really cool interviews this summer. Just as a, a sneak preview, uh, I talked to the great Roger Earl from Fog Hat and Savoy Brown uh, the other day. So he's going to be our first episode back at the beginning of September. Uh, so you're not going to want to miss that. So, so that you don't miss that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button on whatever po- uh, platform you use to listen to the Drum Shuffle podcast. The thing that would help us most of all, and you know, I, I, we bring you guests like Roger Earl, Todd Sukerman, Benny Greb. Um, you know, we have the who's who of the drumming community on this show. If you enjoy the show, send a link to a friend. Just shoot them a text. Say, "Hey, check out this podcast. I think you'll like it." That helps us more than you will ever know, and we appreciate it. We also answer every single email we get here at the podcast. Our email address is the drum shuffle podcast at gmail.com. Our web address is the drum shuffle.com. And you can find more information about me and my musical projects over at jamieeds.com. 
Thanks so much for listening. As always, your homework assignment is go see some live music before it all goes away. So until next time, may your head stay strong and your sticks never break. Cheers, everybody. Cheers.